In the uh, last lesson, we uh, looked at trigonometry and the trig functions, in particular the sine and the cosine, and uh, noted uh, several of them very important things. One is that the measure of an angle is given by the arc length of the circle divided by the radius. That's the measure of the angle in radian form. Uh, that if you go all the way around the circle, the, the, uh, the uh, angular measure then in radians is 2 pi, so this would be pi and pi over 2 for 90 degrees. And then these very important uh, properties of the sine and cosine uh, that are listed here. And then here's the graphs of them. So uh, we'll get rid of this now. And while I have this up here, I'll just mention that just uh, an easier way of writing the sine of theta squared and the cosine of theta squared without so many parentheses is to write it like this. That's the same thing as saying that. Both of those are different from saying this. Okay, this says you first square the number and then you take the sine of it. This says you first take the sine of it and then square it. Very different. We'll talk about composition of functions uh, after, uh, after trig. So very good. Okay. Now, given this, we see that there's only, only a few angles so far that I know exactly what the values of the sine and cosine are. I know them at, at 0, at pi over 2, at pi, 3 pi over 2. Namely, the, the sine and cosine are 1 and 0, respectively. Uh, let's see once if we can't find a couple more. Here's one that we can get. If we take the 45 degree angle, and I will resort to saying 45 degrees just because you're probably familiar with, with that. So 45 degrees, and what would that be in, ang in radian measure? Uh, let's see, 45 degrees is half of 90, and so half of pi over 2 would be pi over 4. So I'm going to write this as pi over 4, and so that's basically halfway up. And um, see once if we can't figure out what the sine and the cosine of that particular angle are. It's easy enough to do from symmetry. Okay, at 45 degrees, or pi over 4, uh, this length is exactly the same as this length, okay, just from symmetry, because, because it doesn't matter whether it's this pi over 4 or this pi over 4, you're going to get the same same uh, tri kind of triangle either way. So, uh, we, of course, we know that this is 1. So let's just call this, um, oh, let's just call it uh, uh, B. For, I don't know, B right there. And this is a B. And so both of those lengths are B. And so what do I know? I know that B squared plus B squared is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. So 2B squared is equal to 1, b squared is equal to 1 half, b is equal to the square root, if we're talking about the, the positive ones here, the square root of 1 half, which properties of, of square roots, you can go like this, and so that's 1 over the square root of 2, it's perfectly defined to write it as 1 over the square root of 2, or if you want to, you can multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 2, and if you do this, the top becomes square root of 2, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. Quite often this is the way you actually see it written. So if you're at pi over 4, then the coordinates of this point are square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So now we know that one, and just from looking at again the symmetry of the circle, we can see what would happen if we're at this angle. That angle would be pi over 2 plus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. And so the, the sine and cosine of it are going to be the same size as these. It's just that the cosine is going to be a negative. The, notice the x-coordinate is negative there. So it's going to be negative square root of 2, square root of 2 over 2. And then down here, what's this angle? This angle is, what, pi plus pi over 4. So this angle that is pi plus pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4, starting with the positive x-axis. And the cosine and sine of it 
are what? That now they're both negative numbers, so it's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, and then finally you could get this one. That angle is going to be 7 pi over 4, and the coordinates of it are going to be what? Square root of 2 over 2, and negative square root of 2 over 2. So the sine and the cosine of these angles are, are listed there. The cosine is the x-coordinate and the sine is the y-coordinate. Okay? So that one we know. Now let's see if we can get one other angle that, uh, in fact, I think it might be easiest just to erase it at this point. And start over again. What about this angle? This is the angle I intend to be a third of the way up. So since this is pi over 2, and this is a third of the way up, this would be pi over uh, 6. If you did it in degrees, this would be 90 degrees, and so this would be a 30 degree uh, angle right there. Let's see if we can figure out what the sine and the cosine of it are. Okay, Another kind of a clever way we can do it. And let's start by first putting it over here. Okay, that doesn't look quite 30 degrees. Try it again. A little bit better. Okay, so, um, so this is a 1. And, um, and these are the two lengths we're trying to find. And this right here, again, is 30 degrees or, or pi over pi over 6. Okay? And here's how we can do it. We can do it by reflecting this thing and drawing its mirror image this way. If we do that, then this is going to be a 60 degree angle, and these are both reflected, so they have to be the same thing. We know that for any triangle, we know that they add up, all three angles add up to 180 degrees, and so since this is 60, and since these two are both the same, they have to be 60 apiece as well. So each of these is 60 degrees, which is uh, pi over 3. And uh, since they're all the same, then this is, an isos uh, this is a uh, um, equilateral triangle. And since it's equilateral and all the angles are the same, that means all the lengths have to be the same. So in particular, this length is also 1, as we would expect, since it's a reflection of that. But this length is also 1. So since this length is 1, and from symmetry, this cuts right in half, this would have to be 1 half right here, and of course this one's 1 half. So that's all we need, because now that we know that that's 1 half, we can now use Pythagorean theorem and say, well, what's this going to be? Well, let's see. I know that b squared plus 1 half squared is equal to 1 squared, and so b squared plus 1 fourth is equal to 1. So b squared is going to be 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. And so b is the square root of 3 fourths, which is the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is, is 2. So this length right here is square root of 3 divided by 2. So now I know for a, a angle of pi over 6, I know that this long leg, uh, that's the cosine, is square root of 3 over 2. And I know that the short leg is 1 half. Okay? So for, for an angle of pi over 6, I know that the cosine is this and the sine is this. And of course I know more than that because I can take this triangle and just put it in a different uh, orientation there and now this is my this now is going to be 60 degrees which is pi over 6 I'm sorry pi over 3 and now this is the short leg so the cosine the x coordinate is now going to be 1 half and the y coordinate is going to be the the long leg which is square root of 3 over 2 so there I know that one and not only do I know those two, but I know all the corresponding ones in these um, 
quadrants as well. Let's take this one for example. This is uh, what? Um, let's see, let's think about it. That's uh, pi over two plus pi over three is what? Five, that's five pi over six. I can do that in my head. You can add them together if you need to. That's five pi over six is the angle. And what's the cosine and sine of that? The cosine is gonna be negative, square root of three over two. And the sine is gonna be a positive uh, one half. Okay, like that. Let's try, um, let's try this one right here. Okay, first of all, what's the angle? Well, lots of ways to do it. If you think of this angle as being pi, and then it's another 60 degrees, which is another pi over 3. Pi plus pi over 3 gives you 4 pi over 3. And then hard to know how to write it in there. Let's just write 4 pi over 3. That's the angle. And what are the sine and cosine of it? The cosine is the x coordinate, which in this case is going to be a negative 1 half. And the uh, sine is the in this case going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. So there they all are. Uh, the easiest way to understand these is just to kind of picture them on the unit circle, but it's pretty convenient just to kind of think of them in a table as well. If you do have a table where this is your uh, Let's see, how do I want to do this? Here's your, here's your theta, and your theta is going to be 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. Let's just do those. And then here is your sine and the cosine. Then the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of this is 1 half square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and 1. And the cosine is just the reverse, 1, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, uh, 1 over 2, and uh, 0. And it's especially easy to think about it if you want to think of it like this. Um, uh, 1, let's, let me, let me, uh, Get rid of this and write it one, one other. Well, let's just do it like this. Uh, zero is the square root of zero over two. This is the square root of one over two, square root of two over two, square root of three over two. And the square root of four over two is, of course, two over two, which is one. So zero, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, zero. So uh, kind of an easy way to remember it. Okay. The way I remember is I remember that this is the medium sized one. So the medium-sized one goes with the, equal, uh, with the uh, isosceles triangle. And so both of these are the same length, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. That's when you have pi over 4. And then if you have pi over 3, like, uh, or I should say pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, then what happens? One of these becomes longer and one becomes shorter. So here's the long one. Here's the short one, and there's the two medium ones. See that? So the two medium ones have to go together, and then if you take it and, and elongate one and shorten the other, then the long and the short one go together. So it's pretty easy to remember them if you just think of what's going on there. Okay, next thing I want to do is to talk about a few other trig functions, okay? Once you have the sine and the cosine, then uh, here's the sine curve. Remember, we, we graphed that one earlier. And now I'm going to write it as y is equal to the sine of x. Now I'm going to just think of this as being a function on the xy plane. And so this is x, and this is y. And what did the function look like? It looked like that. And it went up to 1 and down to negative 1. And what did the cosine look like? It's 
Start it here, like so. Look like that. That's your cosine. So if this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, then y is equal to cosine of x is, is right there. So once you have those two, there are uh, four other trig functions as well. Here they are. I'm going to list them over here. The tangent of x is defined to be the sine of x over the cosine of x. The cotangent of x is just the reciprocal. It's the cosine of x over the sine of x. The uh, secant of x is 1 over the cosine of x. And the cosecant of x is 1 over the sine of x. Okay, how do you remember all those things? The way I remember them is, it's kind of, I remember that each of these pairs has a co to it. So, so this is a cosine, and so its, it's, it's partner is the regular secant. There's no co to this word, and so the partner does have a co. 1 over sine is the cosecant, 1 over the cosine is the secant. Uh, so that's the way I remember those two, and then I just remember that the tangent is sine over cosine, and the cotangent is, is the flip. Okay? So how, are you, how would you graph those? Let's just graph two of them here. Let's graph the secant first. It's 1 over the cosine. Okay? So, um, so what's that going to look like? Well, here's the way I think about it. I just think 1 over the cosine. And here at 0, the cosine is equal to 1. So 1 over 1 is also equal to 1. Okay, so this is, this is going to be y equals secant of x right here. Okay, now what happens here? As the cosine gets closer and closer to 0, here you are at pi over 2, uh, pi over 4 rather. As the cosine gets closer and closer to 0, what do we know happens? As this thing gets smaller and smaller, 1 over that, we learned the other day, or, or previous lesson, 1 over a small number is a big number. So as this number gets really, really small, 1 over that is going to get really, really big. And as this thing actually goes to 0, this is going to go off to infinity. Same on this side. As you move in this direction, the cosine becomes smaller and smaller. 1 over a small number becomes a big number. And so it's going to blow up like that. So there's negative pi over, over um, I'm sorry, pi over 2. That's pi over 2 right there. Pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay? What about right here? I like, let's do, this is pi right there. If we start at pi, what do I know happens? The cosine is negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, so it's still going to be negative 1. As the cosine becomes a very small negative number, 1 over a small negative number is going to be a big negative number, so it's going to go like this. Similarly here, as the cosine becomes a small negative number, 1 over a small negative number becomes a big negative number, so it looks like that. And the secant is going to just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Pretty crazy. So there's the graph of the secant right there. The cosecant would be very similar. It's just going to be shifted over just because the sine is shifted over. Okay? What about the tangent? Let's do the tangent then as well. kind of do it the same way. Okay. Here's pi over 2. Here's pi. Negative pi over 2. And so on. Tangent to sine over the cosine. So let's think what happens. At 0, the sine is 0 and the cosine is 1. 0 over 1 is 0. By the time you get to pi over 2, 
the sine has gotten up to 1, and the cosine has gone to 0. So now this thing is climbing towards 1, and more importantly, this thing is going towards 0. 1 over 0, it gets to be a bigger and bigger number. So here at pi over 2, the ratio is going to be going off to infinity again. So there it goes off to infinity. We know that at pi over 4, they're both the same value, so the tangent is going to be 1. So here at pi over 4, the tangent is going to be 1 right there. Because at pi over 4, remember, that's, that's this situation right here where they're both the same size, and so this divided by that is going to be 1. But at pi, it's going to go off to infinity. Pi over 2 is going to go off to infinity. What happens at negative pi over 2? As you go in this direction, the, the cosine again goes to 0 and the sine goes to negative 1. So this thing is approaching negative 1. In particular, it's a negative number. And this thing is becoming closer and closer to 0. So the ratio is going to get very, very big since this is getting close to negative 1 and this is getting close to 0. The ratio is going to get infinitely big, and it's going to be a negative number since this one's negative and this one's positive. So it's going to look similar to this, but it's going to look like so. So, um, so uh, there's what the tangent is. And if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, the tangent, you'll see, will just keep, keep making the same sort of a... sort of a um, graph that was pretty sloppy like that over and over and over again so it's periodic as well usually when we're concerned about the tangent usually we're concerned with just one part of it like that so so we'll come back to that later okay very good so that's the sign that's the uh, secant and tangent. The other two, as I say, are kind of similar. Last thing I want to do is to just give you one more property of sines and cosines, which are, is rather important. If you were to ask, what's the sine of A plus B? Is there a way to... Um, is there, a, is there a, an identity for that? The, the, the nicest identity would be that that's equal to the sine of A plus the sine of B. Some things in life are that nice. Let's see once if this one is. Well, let's see. I know that the sine of pi is equal to the sine of pi over 2 plus pi over 2, because pi over 2 plus pi over 2 give me pi. And I know that the sine of pi is equal to 0. And if this were the case, this would then be equal to the sine of pi over 2 plus the sine of pi over 2. And I know that the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this side is equal to 0, and this side is equal to 2, so apparently this is not true, okay? Whoops, apparently, uh, yeah, apparently you cannot just take this thing and write it like that. So uh, worth a try, but apparently not. That's not the case, but here's what is the case, okay? And when I teach this in class, I always ask if there are any past cheerleaders of the class, and I give them this jingle. Here's the jingle. Uh, practice it on your own. Uh, take, uh, turn off the video for a moment and see if you can practice it. Here's the jingle. It goes like this. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. That's the only way that this sounds good, okay? It's the only way you have a rhythm. I'll do it one more time. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. One more time. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So here's what you do. You put these two things like this, write them on your piece of paper, and then go ahead and say the jingle. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, 
sine. And then you alternate putting A's and B's in here. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And then you put a plus in the top one and a bottom in the in the in, or in a minus in the negative ones. So obviously, you have to remember to put sine over the cosine there. There are the identities that work. Obviously, I haven't proved it, but, uh, but there they are. They work. And so with these, we can do all sorts of interesting things. We can do, for example, what is the sine of... I'm, I'm going to do it in uh, degrees just because you're, you're used to it. What's the sine of 75 degrees? Well, 75 is the same as 30 plus 45 degrees. And so using this identity, this is going to be the sine of 30 times the cosine of 45 plus the cosine of 30 times the sine, cosine, cosine, sine of 45. And then remembering from what we just did, the sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Plus the cosine of 30 is uh, square root of 3 over 2. And then the sine, oops, the sine of 30, a uh, sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. So we end up with square root of 2 plus the square root of 6, all divided by 4 by the time we're done. So there's an exact value for the sine of 75. So you can use these for all sorts of things like that. Uh, the, another thing you can do is to get a whole bunch more identities. So for example, from these, we can find the um, sine of a minus b. What's the sine of a minus b? Well, that's the sine of a plus a negative b. And now that I think of it as a plus a negative b, I can use this and get the sine of a times the cosine of negative b plus the cosine of a times the sine of negative b. And now I can use the fact that cosine is an even function. So the cosine of negative b is the same as the cosine of b. So that's just that. The sine is an odd function. So the sine of negative b is the negative sine of b. So this negative comes out front, and I can put it right over here minus cosine of a sine of b. So now you have an identity for the sine of the difference between two angles. So for example, using this, if I wanted to, I could find the sine of 15 degrees, because the sine of 15 is the sine of, is the sine of uh, 45 minus 30, and go from there. Okay, another very important identity you can get from both of these is to ask what's the sine of two times an angle. I'll say two times theta. What's the angle of two theta? Well, according, I guess not according to anything, two theta is just the same as theta plus theta. And now that I've written 2 theta as theta plus theta, I can use this, and I can just put in theta for both a and b. And so I get sine of theta, cosine of theta, plus cosine theta, sine theta. So this is equal to, those two are exactly the same, 2 sine of theta, cosine theta. So there's, a, there's an identity. That comes in handy at various places in calculus. And then um, let's do the same thing with cosine. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine of theta plus theta. And if you put in theta here, you're gonna let's let's save one step here. I'm gonna get cosine theta, cosine theta, minus sine theta, sine theta. So this is gonna be cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So it's going to be cosine squared theta. Notice I'm going to write it like that. Minus sine squared theta. Write it like that. And finally, we could go on for a long time here. There's all sorts of trig identities, but one more very important one 
you get by just remembering this. You remember that uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So right here, I can replace the sine squared theta with what's, e what's sine squared theta equal to? Sine squared theta is going to be 1 minus cosine squared theta. See that? Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So here I'm going to get cosine squared theta minus, now what's sine squared equal to? Sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. And now look at what we can do. Here's a cosine squared theta. There's another positive one. So I have 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So that's all equal to cosine of 2 theta. And now I can add 1 to both sides and divide it by 2. Do that in your head. Add 1 to both sides, divide by 2, and you're going to get cosine squared theta is equal to, if you add 1, you're going to get 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. And then you divide by 2 is all divided by 2. So uh, as I say, we, you could do the same thing for uh, to get an identity for sine squared theta, and there's all sorts of other things. I'll do just one more. If you let uh, t be equal to um, theta divided by 2, if you let t be equal to theta divided by 2, um, or maybe here's a better way to think about it, if we just let 2 theta be equal to, to t, then theta is going to be t over 2, and so you can rewrite this equation as what? Cosine squared of t over 2. is equal to 1 plus cosine t over 2. And then finally, running out of board space here, but I could take the square root of both sides, like that. And uh, this is just to show you, you don't have to, you can go to any book and see all these identities, but it's just to show you all the different identities that you can get and these in particular are ones that we use in calculus. Uh, this one we use, uh, we end up using this one quite a bit, and we also end up using this one quite a bit. So uh, just very quickly I was able to show you all those, but uh, the, the point is just by starting with these identities, and we didn't prove these, but you can prove these as well, and then get all these other ones, then you use all those properties of tr trig functions in order to solve different kinds of calculus problems. So this is the end of calculus. That's basically, I tell students, the good news, I mean, this is the end of trig, rather. Uh, the, the, the good news is there's only about uh, two or three hours worth of trig that you need for everything you need to know in calculus. The bad news is most students don't know that two or three hours. So here it is. Between this one and the last lesson, you basically have all the trig that you're going to need to solve anything and do anything you need to know in calculus. So we'll stop right there.